Now that you've set up your Google Classroom, it's time to start adding assignments. To do that, you want to click on the Classwork tab, and that is going to show you this Create button. When you click Create, there are a number of options. You can do an assignment, a Kami assignment, a Nearpod assignment, a quiz assignment, a question material. You can reuse a post, or you can add a topic. So if we'll start at the bottom. If you add a topic, that's just um, giving your classroom that organization we've talked about. So maybe it's by unit, maybe it's by date, maybe it's by an overall topic for your class. So maybe this is my resources topic and I can add that. So Google Classroom is going to post the newest thing at the top. So if I wanted to add another topic, this will be my week, and I click Add. That's going to go above the Resources tab. Now for the reuse post, if you don't have any other Google Classrooms, you're probably not going to be able to use this. But if you want to reuse something from a class you've done before, you can click that button, and then it's going to show all of the classes you have. So let's just do... Here, we'll do productivity tips and tricks. So from there, you choose one of the assignments that's listed. Maybe I'll do that welcome one. And underneath, you have this create new copies for all attachments. You can leave that ticked or you can untick it. It might muddle up your Google Drive if it's creating new copies of everything every time. But if you want it to be specific to that classroom, you can leave that box ticked. Then you click that reuse, and it's going to pull all of the information and open it here. So it has the title that I used, all of the instructions. Over here, when you click that tiny triangle, I can actually assign this to other courses as needed or not. So when we are making assignments, we need to pay attention to these tiny triangles because I could assign it to all students or I could say, you know what, this is just for one student. Next, you have points. The default, I believe, is 100. Um, this assignment was ungraded because it's just a welcome assignment. So I'm going to close my video so we can talk about the rest. I'm going to leave this as an ungraded assignment. The due date, you're welcome to add a due date if you want. You'll click the date, and it will tell you the time is optional. But when you click on it, it's actually defaulting to 11.59 p.m. So it will send emails to class participants at exactly 11.59 p.m. So I like to change it to like four or something like that, just in case people have notifications set up on their phone or what have you, and I don't want them disturbed at midnight. You can change the topic. I can put this in the resource topic. I can put this in the week one topic. I can actually create a topic and maybe this will be my welcome topic. Next, you can add a rubric. So you can create, reuse, or import from Sheets. I'm gonna leave that blank since this is an ungraded assignment. We do have the ability to use this plagiarism checker, but when you click this Learn More, it's going to tell you that the originality reports, which we do have access to, it really only works with Google Docs. So it's, eh. You can just turn it on if you want or leave it off. And then here, if we click this tiny triangle, I can assign, I can schedule, I can save it as a draft, or I can just discard it as needed. Over here, we have the ability to add an attachment from either Google Classroom, maybe a link to a website. So if I wanted to add like npr.org, I can type that in add link, and that's going to give them a link to National Public Radio. Um, you can add a file from your computer. So if I click that, it's going to open from Google Drive. I can maybe find in my starred or recent. And then you can click on that and just insert that resource there. You can also click YouTube, so you could add a video. You can search, or you can have a URL already ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that resource as well. You can also create from within here. So if you don't have what you need, you can create a doc, a slide, 
a sheet, whatever you need, and then it pops into another tab. So you can start using this as part of the assignment. And any changes you've made, once you close this, you'll see that it changes here. Now, I can make this so that students can view the file, which means when they click on this untitled document, they'll just be able to see the welcome document. I can change it so that they can edit. That means that students would be able to add images, text, or what have you to the Google Doc. Or I can make a copy for each student, which means that each student will get a copy of this welcome document and they will have to add an image to it or whatever your instructions say. So there we have it. When you're ready, you can assign or you can schedule. I usually do that. So this is going to come out on Monday morning at 8 a.m. I click schedule and it takes us back to that classwork tab and we can see our new welcome topic here. If you need to rearrange, you can just drag and drop. And then you just keep using that create button to create a material or any other assignments you have. So the material is a little different. I can add a description if I want. Again, I have the tiny triangles. If I want to assign it to more Google Classrooms, I just tick them. If I want to assign it to all students or just one student, I can do that as well. If you have a specific topic that you want this to go to, you can do that. Um, I can edit the text, make it a bulleted list, all of those text editing things, and then I can add from Google Drive or my computer wherever I need. So we'll add this new teacher training. I can click that insert button. And because it's a material, I don't have that option to make a copy for each student or even have them edit. This is not an assignment. This is going to look a little different on the student end. So I'm gonna go ahead and click post and we'll see that material there. Now, if we are doing a question, you do have some options here. We can do a short answer or a multiple choice. So short answer asks students to add text. So this will be 901 question. Short answer question. What's your name? And again, we click on the tiny triangles. Do we want this added to another classroom? Do we want this for all of our students? Do I want to adjust the point value so that it's maybe just one point? Do I want to add that due date so that students know this is time sensitive? You make all of those adjustments and just keep moving down through. So which topic? This is going to go in week one. Do you want students to reply to each other? That's the default. You can allow students to edit their answer as well, or you can leave that unticked. As soon as you're ready, you can click ask, or again, click that tiny triangle if you want to schedule, save it as a draft, or say, you know what, I don't want this at all. So right now it's saved. So if I exit out of this, it's there as a draft and it says draft over here. If you want to edit, you click the tiny dots, click that edit button. And as soon as I ask, it's going to have that orange color for, there we go. So welcome hasn't come out yet. You see that it is still, oops, scheduled for May 24th at 8 a.m. Now let's look at our multiple choice question. How are you today? And then I add my options down here. Great. Good. Okay. Not so great. Meh. And as soon as you have all of your options, again, we have this ability to add another resource if we need to. We want to go to the right, see if we want to add this to our other sections. Do you want it for all students? Change that point value. Maybe this shall be ungraded. Add a due date. Put it into a topic. 
and you can turn on or off the student summary. So in this case, they'll see what after they answered, they'll see what others have said. So I'm going to go ahead and ask that. So those are the two question options. You can do short answer or you can do multiple choice. Multiple choice works kind of like a voting tool as well. Now for a quiz assignment, this creates a Google form for you. It also turns on that grade importing. Once you've filled out all the assignment information, including the information off to the right here, you can click on that blank quiz and start editing it. So when you click on answer key, I can make this worth 10 points, 100 points, and add answer feedback, or correct answers or incorrect answers. But I'm going to go ahead and click done because this is just my example. So this is worth 10 points. If I want to change this here to be 10 points so that it matches, that works. Otherwise, when you import grades, it should adjust that point value as needed. When you're ready with the quiz assignment, click assign. Now you notice I forgot to change it from blank quiz. So I'm actually going to click that and you'll see that example quiz one is what this has changed to. So that worked out well. Next up, we have a Nearpod assignment. If you have a Nearpod account, it will ask you to sign in and it will take you to your lesson library. So if you have a lesson that you've been working on, like here I've got homophones, I could actually click on that assignment and it has created a draft of my homophone assignment. So I'd have to go through and edit. I can change the number, I can change how many points, the due date and all of that. And when you're ready, you would click assign. Let's put this in week one. So the Nearpod integration is a little clunky. It'll probably get better. We don't have paid accounts for Nearpod. Some schools do. Um, that's up to you. We do have Kami. So you can make an assignment in Kami or from Google Classroom. Once you click that Kami assignment, it's loading that Google Classroom Kami assignment. So now I get to choose which classes I want this to go to. Do I want it for all students? Do I want it to be published or a draft? Next, you have this feature restriction. We have so many features from Kami, so you can turn them all off and then go through and decide what you want, or you can leave them all on, but then say, you know what? I don't want them using the dictionary. I don't want screen capture comments or voice comments. I don't want them using equations or drawing or putting shapes. I want them to be able to erase. I don't want them inserting images. They don't need the signature. So when you do that, the only tools that are going to be available to students are the select tools, the text-to-speech markup, um, specific comment tools, the text box, the eraser. So all of the other tools will not show up on their toolbar. When you have thoughtfully made your selections, click that OK button. And this is going to be assignment 904, Kami assignment. You can put your instructions there. You could add a video of, your, of yourself from Google Classroom. You can change the point value here. You can change the due date here. Oh gosh, it even gives you the time. <laughs> All right, I can schedule it for now or later. I can put it into the topics that I have in Google Classroom. I can choose to send Kami instructions to students, which I would leave on specifically for the first one. And add links for mobile devices, I would leave that as well. If you have other attachments, you can put those there. But once you are ready, there it is, you click the, oh, I need to attach one file. So if we go to Drive and find a PDF that I have, let's do the Clave's Pathways. So I'll select that. Now, 
CAMI defaults to make a copy for each student because CAMI is really for annotation and seeing students' thoughts. If you want um, to share one copy, you could do that, but I would probably leave this as make a copy for each student. Then once you click that assign button, we'll see what that looks like on the student end later. So now we know that our Google Classroom CAMI assignment has been created and I can click that open in classroom so that I can see what it looks like. And if I have to edit anything, I can do that as well. Okay, next is the regular assignment. And this is going to look very similar. We can change all of the settings over here. And when you're ready, you can assign or you can save this as a draft. So I know this was a very, very long video, but that's all about that create button. There's a lot we can do with that.